Alex. I recognized my grandson, Alex, standing at the crosswalk despite the slashing rain, standing out because he wasn't using an umbrella. I leaned over from the passenger seat, flung the door open, and called out loudly as if scolding him. Alex, get in the car now. Grandma, Grandma. Once Alex saw my face, he smiled faintly and climbed into the passenger seat with heavy steps, then immediately leaned against me and became motionless. I shook his shoulder and slapped his cheek repeatedly, calling out, Alex, Alex, but he kept his eyes closed, breathing roughly, and wouldn't respond. Touching his forehead, I felt an abnormal warmth and exclaimed, He's burning up. Grandma's hand feels good. It seemed Alex faintly felt my touch, murmured this, and then lost consciousness. Alex, stay with me. I pulled out a thermometer I always carry in my bag, placed it under his armpit, and it read 102.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This is dangerous. Realizing this, I immediately called 911. Soon, I heard the shrill siren of the emergency vehicle, along with announcements directing the line of cars to make way. This way, please hurry. Unable to stay put, I ran out into the pouring rain and signaled to the ambulance. My name is Catherine Kay, 56 years old. Having lost my husband two years ago, I now work at a diner called Relax Place, just a 10 minute drive from my home to alleviate my loneliness. I have been like family with the owner and his wife for a long time and my husband and son, Mike, used to often eat there on weekends. Since my husband died and Mike became independent, those times have become distant memories. However, now the moments I spend quietly watching my grandson Alex eat are my greatest joy. Mike's wife, Jenny, found out she had cancer three years ago and passed away despite treatment. Since then, I've occasionally taken care of Alex so he wouldn't feel lonely, as if I were standing in for Jenny. Perhaps I am being healed of the loneliness of losing my husband by Alex. A year ago, Mike told me about a woman he was considering remarrying. You can't keep feeling down, for Jenny's sake, and for Alex's, you have to move forward. I always firmly told him, and I was relieved to hear this news. Her name is Sarah, a colleague from his company. She's eight years younger than him. Mike often recalled her with a carefree smile, saying she was always ready to help him. I wondered how he would work with such a smitten expression but saw a spark of life in his eyes for the first time in a long while. So even though I didn't say it out loud, I was cheering him on in my heart. You can do it. Sarah promised to quit her job and become a full-time housewife to take care of Alex after getting married. I can trust you with Mike and Alex. I'm looking forward to our future together. I had a good impression of her at that time. When I visited their apartment. Welcome, Catherine. I'll make some tea right away. Well, let me bake some cake too. I'm really good at that. Sarah greeted me with sparkling eyes and an overly enthusiastic manner. Oh, thank you. Then how about a shoulder massage? You must be tired from the drive. I was taken aback, but she seemed restless, unable to sit still. 
I'm actually good at massages, you know. My parents back home always rave about them. While she showed care for me, I felt a bit of discomfort at her eagerness to showcase her charm. From the moment I entered the room, her readiness to respond to every little action seemed overly deliberate to me, and I couldn't help but find it artificial. Furthermore, Sarah kept lamenting that she had run out of tea snacks. If I had known you were coming today, I would have lined up in the morning to buy that popular pudding. What a shame. I'm such a thoughtless DIL. I apologize. Sarah apologized so deeply that I felt embarrassed. Interacting with her, everything seemed calculated, but I hesitated to voice it. And after all, it's not my place to interfere in my son's marriage. Perhaps Sarah is just struggling to find the right distance with her new family. I convinced myself that over time, the emotional barriers between us would disappear. One day, a year after their marriage, Mike brought good news. Sarah is pregnant. His excited voice made me tear up. Is that so? Congratulations. That was all I could say with a trembling voice. You seem very happy today. Something good happened. My smile was so constant that even the owner of Relax Place teased me. A regular customer said my smile made them feel like working hard in the afternoon. I played it off by joking, you won't get any extra treats for saying that, which livened up the diner. After work, I brought Sari a bath salt and fruit basket, set as a pregnancy gift, hoping it would provide her some mental comfort. As this would be my second grandchild, I was thrilled at the thought of Alex having a sibling to grow up with. After parking in the visitor spot, I glanced at the park across the street and saw Alex sitting on a bench, looking down. What are you doing here all alone? When I called out, Alex looked up and smiled sadly. It's not fun alone, right? I was about to go to your house. Want to join? There's plenty of fruit. Eat whatever you like. But he just shook his head, neither standing up from the bench or speaking, quickly dropping his gaze to the ground. I tried to take him to the apartment, but he resisted with unexpected strength. I want to stay here. He said, refusing to move, as if his feet were glued to the ground. There must be something. I sensed it, but felt reluctant to force Alex to come back against his will. Wait here. I handed him an orange and went to the apartment alone. Exiting the elevator on my son's floor, I heard the laughter of a young man and woman. Am I intruding? I proceeded down the hallway with my head down but the laughter was coming from my son's apartment. What's going on, Sarah? I thought there was a young couple chatting nearby. I saw Sarah and a delivery man in uniform at the door. They suddenly fell silent, and the delivery man left without a word. Isn't it Todd for a delivery man not to speak to the resident after delivering? I asked, puzzled by the delivery man's behavior. Sarah then glared at me with an intensity I'd never seen before, but she quickly snapped out of it. Oh, Catherine, are you here? She said, trying to recover her composure. Then Alex came back from the park, walking slowly. Hi, did that guy leave already? When Alex asked this, 
Sarah glanced at me and smiled awkwardly. Don't say weird things. That guy was just a delivery man. A friend living far away sent us a package. She said, looking down at Alex. Alex stopped in his tracks, not moving any further, and apologized to Sarah with a frightened voice. I handed Sarah the bath salt and fruit basket set. I heard from Mike, you have a baby on the way. That's wonderful, congratulations. I'll help in any way I can to ensure you have a healthy baby. Just let me know what you need. While saying this, I looked around the room, but I couldn't see the package that was supposed to have been delivered. Alex used to greet me with a bright smile whenever I visited, but today, for some reason, he was silent, playing on his smartphone in the corner of the room. Hey Alex, what are you doing over there? Grandma came to visit you. Sarah pretended to smile, but her eyes weren't smiling. Alex whispered sorry again, in a frightened voice, and then came over to my side, glancing at his mother's face. Sarah talked alone until I left, but during that time, Alex didn't leave my side or say a word. The next weekend, Alex came to visit me at my house. That day, he was as lively as ever, amusingly telling me about things that happened at school. However, when a delivery truck stopped in front of the house, he tensed up and clung to me. What's wrong? Are you scared of that truck? But you used to love trucks, didn't you? An older, gray-haired delivery man came to get a signature for a package. Oh, thank you, I said as I signed, while Alex stayed hidden behind me. The delivery man greeted Alex with a big smile, saying hello, but Alex stiffened and apologized. The delivery man and I exchanged puzzled looks. What's wrong? This man isn't mad at you, you know. Yeah, buddy, I'm not scary at all, see? The delivery man said, pulling out a piece of candy from his pocket. Here, take this and cheer up. After handing the candy to Alex and driving away in his truck, I again asked Alex what was wrong, but he just averted his eyes, biting his lower lip in frustration. Then one day, a large typhoon approached the area where I lived. Although we avoided a direct hit, intermittent train continued all day due to its effects. Some areas experienced band-like heavy rainfalls, with the news reporting a month's worth of rain might fall in just a few hours. At Relax Place, where there would normally be a line of customers waiting to get in during the busy lunch hour, the flow of customers was as sparse as dripping water due to the rain. As the wind grew stronger, even those few customers disappeared, leading the owner to sigh and say, Looks like we won't have any customers today, Catherine. You can go home. After packing up some leftover ingredients in a bag, I ran to my car parked behind the restaurant, struggling to keep my umbrella from turning inside out in the strong wind, and my clothes were soaking wet by the time I got in the car. I wiped my face and body with a towel I had in the dashboard, just to make me feel better. Turning on the radio, the sound was drowned out by the noise of the rain pounding outside, so I turned up the volume to the maximum. The rain will continue for a while, the anchor said carefully, but I could tell just by looking at the torrential rain slamming against the window. When I started driving onto the main road, I got stuck in a long traffic jam due to the typhoon's impact, which also paralyzed the rail service. 
The view through the windshield was a blurry white, but the traffic lights red glared at the drivers at regular intervals, tauntingly bright. I wonder if there's anyone brave enough to walk the crosswalk in this downpour. Glancing casually at the sidewalk, I spotted a boy about elementary school age. What, Alex? I recognized him instantly because, despite the heavy rain, he stood out without an umbrella, dragging a plastic bag with its handle apparently torn off on the asphalt. I leaned over to the passenger seat to open the door and called out to him as if scolding. Alex, get in right now. Grandma, Grandma. Seeing me, Alex smiled faintly, climbed into the passenger seat with heavy steps, then immediately leaned against me and became motionless. I shook his shoulder and slapped his cheek, calling out, Alex, Alex, but he kept his eyes closed, breathing heavily, not responding. Feeling his forehead, I noticed an abnormal heat and exclaimed in shock, while you are burning up. Grandma's hand feels nice. Feeling my touch, Alex murmured this before losing consciousness. Alex, hold on. I quickly took the thermometer from my bag and placed it under his armpit, displaying a temperature of 103.1 degrees Fahrenheit. I rushed to send a message to Sarah via text, but no matter how long I waited, there was no reply, not even a read receipt. What is she doing at a time like this? Anger towards Sarah welled up, but I realized I needed to focus on saving Alex's life and immediately called 911. The plastic bag Alex clawed to was stuffed with lots of snacks and fruits like apples, pears, and bananas, but I had no time to question it then. Soon, I heard the high-pitched siren of the emergency vehicle and announcements directing the traffic to make way. This way, hurry, please. I couldn't stand still and ran out into the pouring rain to signal to the ambulance driver. Upon reaching the hospital, everything was set for immediate reception, and Alex was quickly attended to by a doctor. It's a cold, with symptoms of pneumonia. Fortunately, it's mild, and there's no threat to his life. We'll start within four and then move on to oral medication. Thank you. I said, relieved, but the doctor still looked concerned. Um, doctor, is there something else? The cold isn't from getting rained on just now. He probably had it before then. The swelling of the tonsils and the rash under his nose. These don't happen in just an hour. It's likely that Alex had been sick with a cold since yesterday or the day before. Yet he was out in the rain without an umbrella. Poor thing. Look how red and chapped his nose is from wiping it so much. The pneumonia was mild, but a slight delay in treatment could have been life-threatening. The doctor looked at me questioningly, but I had no idea how to respond. Grandma. Alex regained consciousness and called out to me in a weak voice. I held his hand and spoke gently into his ear. Alex, what is it? Do you want to say something? That man, the delivery guy, he's really close with her. When dad's at work, that guy always comes and I've seen them hugging each other. Her, you mean Sarah. Alex struggled to convey what he had witnessed, 
and I felt an overwhelming sense of anguish. This meant Sarah was having an affair. I've been sick since yesterday, but today, that guy came again and told me to leave right now. I said no because I didn't want to go out in the rain. Then, the guy packed up various things into a plastic bag, telling me you are in the way, go play delivery boy, and send me out. The plastic bag, the one you had, filled with snacks and fruit, was it heavy? Did that delivery man make you carry it? Alex nodded clearly. The guy said, take it to grandma's place, with a laugh. The doctor and I exchanged looks. This is serious. As a doctor, I cannot overlook this situation. I can't forgive her either. We must do something about that woman. The surge of anger and sorrow within me felt ready to explode. By the time I was heading home, the rain had stopped, and the sunlight shone brightly on the moist asphalt. Jenny, I'm so sorry for this. I promise to protect your precious Alex. I talked to the photo of Jenny smiling happily while holding newborn Alex. I felt guilty for not realizing his suffering. Not only was I angry at Sarah and her lover, but I also felt the weight of my own inadequacy. When Mike said he wanted to remarry, I was overjoyed, thinking it meant he could move past his sorrow and start new. Now, feeling resentful towards my past self, I repeatedly punched my thigh trying to release some of the pent-up emotions, though it was nothing compared to Alex's pain. The doorbell ran, and thinking it was a visitor, I hastily wiped my tears and forced a smile in the mirror. Coming, I said, heading to the door to welcome the guest. There was Sarah, smiling, still unaware of everything. I'm so sorry, Catherine, for making you look after Alex. She was still playing the part of a considerate mother. Alex, mommy is here to pick you up. Come out. Sarah called out loudly towards the back of the house, thinking Alex was playing there. What? Alex isn't here today. Are you saying he's not at your house? Then where could he have gone? I feigned ignorance about Alex's whereabouts, and Sarah's face turned pale rapidly. What do you mean he's not here? Alex definitely said he was going to Grandma's house and left excitedly. Did he really say that? That can't be true. It's been raining all morning, and the wind was so strong. Even adults would hesitate to go out in that weather. But. He clearly said he was going to deliver some snacks and fruits to Grandma. He must have been pretending to be a delivery boy. Did he really say that, even though it was pouring rain outside? You let her six-year-old run out into the storm without stopping him or even looking for him. I didn't stop him, because, um, I let children do as they please, you know. I believe in respecting a child's autonomy. That's my parenting philosophy. Sarah's attitude, as if the whole situation was Alex's fault, drove my anger to its peak. Alex is in the hospital now. He got wet in the heavy rain without an umbrella, developed pneumonia, and the doctor said it could have been life-threatening if treatment had been delayed. What? Sarah screamed in shock, then glared at me furiously. Are you lying to me? Do you enjoy seeing me panic? Isn't that shameful? I don't care what you think. What matters is Alex. He suffered enough. If you want to be a mother, 
Start by putting your child first. Sarah attempted to argue, her teeth bared, but then realized the gravity of the situation and asked, which hospital is he at? I'll go get the car. Wait for me. No need. I can't trust you. Sarah refused with a frightening expression and called a taxi using her phone app. Was she trying to secretly communicate with her lover or conspiring to align their stories in case Alex's mistreatment came to light? I returned to the hospital to wait, and Sari arrived about 10 minutes later. Where is Alex Gay's room? She asked hospital staff indiscriminately, pretending to be a concerned mother. However, she was stopped by a nurse at the entrance to the room. This area is off limits for visitors. You are not allowed in. Alex, mommy is here now. You can relax. Sarah smiled gently like a saint, but then two people in suits approached her. Are you Sarah Kay? We need to talk to you. Please come with us to the station, showing their police badges. What? Why do I have to go with the police? I'm his mother. Let me see Alex. What have I done to deserve this? Let me go. Despite her resistance, the police officers remained calm and detained her firmly. The doctor who examined Alex had advised involving the police, believing Alex's testimony couldn't be ignored. If my grandson were in the same situation, I might not be satisfied with just going to the police. The doctor said, half jokingly, half seriously, with a hearty laugh. It was getting dark outside, but I saw that Mike, who should have been on a business trip, had called. I called him back. I had a meeting in the next county and came home early to find no one there, and I was shocked. I told Mike everything that had happened that day without hiding anything. Initially, he was skeptical, but his tone gradually fell, and he promised to look around the house for any evidence. About an hour later, Mike called back. One piece of evidence after another. Photos and videos of them looking cozy together, even traces of them using our bedroom. Learning of his wife's betrayal and the mistreatment of his precious son left by his late wife, Mike spoke as if venting his hatred. Later, Sarah was arrested for child neglect, and her lover, the delivery man, was also arrested and charged as a co-conspirator. Frankly, I still don't want to believe that Sarah could do such horrible things to Alex. I wish all of Alex's suffering were just lies. It might sound odd with a trial coming up, but I feel like running away right now, hearing the truth, is just too painful. But facing that truth, head on, is the only thing we can do for Alex now. Reliving his suffering through the trial is all we have. Feeling helpless. I convinced myself that exposing the crime Sarah and her lover committed in court is our duty. As the trial began, Sarah kept looking down in the defendant's seat, making me think she regretted her actions. However, when she looked up and caught my eye, without any concern for those around, she twisted her face and stuck out her tongue defiantly. The media were stunned by Sarah's lack of remorse. What a terrible person. Does she understand her situation? Were the cries from around the room. The judge had to call for order to quiet the commotion. Sarah, smirking, took the stand and began narrating the events leading up to the incident as if giving a business report. 
she admitted seeing an opportunity when Mike, who was advancing in his career, became depressed after losing his beloved wife. Well, honestly, he wasn't my type, but he seemed wealthy and likely to become more powerful, so I thought I could live comfortably by getting involved with him. She spoke frankly, showing no remorse. Sarah revealed that her affair with her lover, Michael, predated her relationship with Mike. He's handsome, just like movie stars, and exactly my type. She continued her relationship with Michael, thinking it unlikely to be discovered by Mike, who was often away for work. She also confessed to finding Alex annoying from the start. His expressions, which sometimes resembled those of the late Jenny, stirred up feelings of hatred in her. While meeting Michael, she treated Alex harshly, laughing at his crying and making sure he couldn't enter the house when they were together. They even recorded these moments on their smartphones. When I threatened him with a scary face saying, don't tell anyone, he surprisingly listened. It was quite fun for me. But when I got pregnant with Michael's child, I panicked. If the affair came out, I'd be thrown out, losing access to any money. So I had an idea. I can just have the baby and pretend it's my husband's. That way, the affair wouldn't be discovered, and even the unborn child would have inheritance rights. Thinking that, Alex's presence became an unbearable nuisance. After Sarah finished explaining her motives for mistreating Alex, the courtroom fell silent, appalled by her selfishness. Her lawyer, sweating, tried desperately to mitigate her crimes. Are we not done yet? Sarah yawned, undermining her lawyer's efforts. She continued on the stand. It wasn't just Alex. Catherine, too, coming over every single time something happened, was unbearably annoying to me. I wanted every single second with Michael. It was so annoying. Her blunt expression of her feelings further worsened the judge's impression of her. As a result, she received a harsher sentence than the prosecution's request, and the trial concluded Needless to say, Mike and Sarah's divorce was finalized. Forced to pay a substantial amount in alimony, Sarah's life of poverty was set in stone. Alex, I was wrong. I was always busy with work and left you under Sarah's care. It must have been hard. Marrying such a terrible woman was my mistake. I am truly sorry. It's okay, Dad. I love you, but I have one request. What is it? Anything you want, just tell me, and I'll buy it for you. It's not that. What I want most is to be with you. Mike, with tears in his eyes, then hugged his son tightly, shouting, Alex. Later, Mike applied for a transfer from his travel-intensive job to a more stable office position. Everyone was surprised, but given the recent events, no one objected. Years later, after being released from prison, Sarah and Michael began loitering around our home. It's your family's fault we're labeled as criminals. Can't rent a place or get a job. You've made us suffer Take responsibility. I immediately called the police to handle Sarah's misplaced accusations. Afterward, Mike and I decided to sell our house and move to a secure luxury apartment using the sale proceeds. Returning to the relaxed place with Mike and Alex after a long time, the owner greeted us with a smile. Alex, have you grown taller since I last saw you? As I stood up, asking out of habit, can I help with anything? 
The owner came over. No me, Kafferan. You're a guest today, right? And it's my treat. Especially since Alex is here too. Eat whatever you like. I love the fried pork meal here. But even more than that, I love being with dad and grandma the most. Seeing my grandson's smile return, I swore to my heart. I will never let that smile be taken away again.